From the ancient world, we still have the names of warriors like Hercules and Achilles, and also tyrants like Ramses the Great and Agamemnon. But one figure stands out for his mind, or more correctly, his wisdom. Today, we'll be discussing the legendary King Solomon. So why King Solomon? When I began to go down the Joseph Nicolet rabbit hole that led me to write the Alchemist Chronicles and the Dreamcatcher Chronicles, at the bottom of this deep dive was Solomon. Before we discuss the legends and lore surrounding Solomon, let's review the biblical accounts. Before he was even conceived, Solomon was a cautionary tale. His father, King David, passed this sins of the father curse onto his son with the infamous Bathsheba incident involving adultery and the death of Bathsheba's husband. While David eventually made an honest woman of Bathsheba, who likely was a foreigner, her name means daughter of Sheba, a cloud hung over Solomon the rest of his days. Solomon, of course, is most famous for asking the Lord for wisdom, which made him Israel's most successful king and its wealthiest. Historically, Solomon's claim to fame was the temple in Jerusalem, which by description was one of the greatest buildings on the planet. We'll get back to how he built it in the Legends and Lore segment. Biblical accounts also openly reference Solomon's alliance with the nearby King of Tyre. The city of Tyre is significant for being an island fortress and the heart of the Phoenician Empire, which was known for its naval prowess. The end of Solomon's life is often ignored by preachers since it features Solomon's fall from grace. And unlike his frisky father, Solomon's sins were worshiping the gods of his almost 1,000 wives, if you count the concubines. For his crimes, the favored status of Israel was withdrawn away and civil war ripped the nation apart. So, should we be judged on our best day or our worst day? Solomon's best day might have been during his encounter with the Queen of Sheba. This encounter came early in Solomon's 40-year reign, when his righteousness made him famous. Curiously, the Queen of Sheba didn't come as a fangirl, but she came to test him. And how do you test the wisest man? Apparently, the Queen of Sheba already knew the answers. With the Queen of Sheba, we'll now begin to transition into some of the lore. Several cultures tell stories about the Queen of Sheba, who was known as Makeda by the Ethiopians. The ancient kingdom of Aksum has many rich legends, including several connecting to King Solomon. First, Queen Makeda is said to have given birth to an heir of King Solomon, a line of kings that continued until the 1900s. There is also a legend that the Ark of the Covenant is kept secure in Ethiopia. During the Great Crusades, when control of the Holy Lands shifted between Templar and Muslim control, King Lalabella of Ethiopia toured Jerusalem and returned with some miraculous technology. With his new tech, King Lalabella formed 11 churches out of a single block of solid stone. 
the whole complex was made in just a few short years. And to this day, it puzzles engineers how he even built it. Did Lalabella learn it from the wisdom of King Solomon? Although Solomon had been dead for almost two millennium, his secrets were an invaluable treasure. The Templars, or Knights of the Temple of Solomon, reportedly raided the foundations of the old temple and returned to Europe with a treasure of immeasurable value. Did Lalabella also steal a treasure? Remember, Solomon's wisdom led him to essentially become a mason, a builder of the greatest building of its times. Yet, to make an altar of God, Levitical law required it to be built of unhewn stone, which is why it had been kept in a tent prior to Solomon. And how do you build a temple without cutting any stone? Apparently, with magic. In alchemy, the Philosopher's Stone is a substance that can shape matter, like turning lead into gold. According to its mythos, the Philosopher's Stone potentially was a tool of creation. Understanding the Philosopher's Stone is understanding all matter and the elements. So, if Solomon wanted to transform solid stone, the ancient philosopher's stone would have done the trick. One Solomon legend tells of a quest given to Solomon's trusted aid Benea to search the world for a substance to aid in the building of the temple. Remember, the Queen of Sheba gave Solomon the ships of Hiram, which is the equivalent of giving him the power of the Phoenician fleet. In another account, Solomon commissioned a search for a legendary substance known as the Shamir, a strange wonder created on the eve of the first Sabbath day. Could the Shamir have been another name for the Philosopher's Stone? Did Lalabella acquire the same technology that Solomon used? Rabbinical scholars describe the Shamir as something that is both a living being and also a green stone which needed to be wrapped in wool and stored in a lead container or it would simply dissolve its surroundings. Green? Dissolve? Sounds like vitriol. The quest to find the original Shamir failed, which leads to darker tales where Solomon enlists the help of the demon known as Asmodeus. This tale leads into the infamous Seal of Solomon, otherwise known as the Magical Ring. Remember, the biblical tradition has Solomon worshiping the gods of his foreign wives. And even in the time of Christ, Solomon is synonymous with being the father of exorcism. With his wisdom, Solomon fashioned his ring with secret runes written upon it. With it, he was able to command and control demons, including the king of demons, Asmodeus. Through Asmodeus, Solomon cheats 
and learns the secret of the Shamir, uh, essentially creating a knockoff of the original that lets him shape the temple stone without tools. Solomon had his magic and he used it to create his miracle, the Temple of Solomon. In both the biblical account and the legendary account of Solomon, the figure of Hiram looms large. While the Bible doesn't mention a Shamir, it does talk about how Hiram of Tyre helped Solomon build the temple. This Hiram character, a mason, becomes a symbolic character in Freemason symbology, connecting Solomon, Templars, and the secrets of masonry together. 2,000 years after Solomon and Hiram, a group of crusaders dubbed themselves the Knights of the Temple of Solomon. And after visiting Jerusalem, like King Lalabella, they came back with more than just monetary wealth. When the Templar Order was shattered on Friday the 13th, 1307, a mysterious fleet and an even more mysterious treasure were hidden away, only to resurface on the continent of North America at the mysterious Oak Island. But that's a legend for another video. For all of these reasons, I invented the story of Benea's quest, going to the far side of the world to find the mysterious stone that could transform matter and was a living spirit within a stone. How would these explorers know where to go? I posited that Solomon created a map for them. My fictional Ethiopian character, Abaran, returns with his own map of the place where the water flows in all directions and the earth bleeds blue. So, thanks for the cool lore, Solomon. Until we meet again next time.